Now the second English wet we're going to tie, which is very similar to the Dunk Held, but it's less colour, it's a bit more supple in the water, um, is the Mallard and Claret, very famous fly. And um, you can tie it with two types of tail. Uh, you can tie it with the crest, you can tie it with the crest tail, or you can tie it with just the tippets. I like the tippets, uh, just a bit of a variation. These flies are not difficult to tie. I'm tying it on a B175 um, 10, as I, I, I do them in 12s and 4s. 12s is probably my, my common denominator. And of course, I do tie flies in two different hooks. Strengths are B175s and B170s. That's because sometimes you want the fly higher in the water. Okay, I don't have a particularly long tail on them because I find these just break if you have too long a tail on them anyway. And we don't have to worry about the body, the bits and pieces, because we've got a dub bonnie on it. There again, I use, I'm using the, the fine gold wire, small, not... <coughs> Okay, now, I'm not sure how most of you guys dub, but I'm using seal's fur, a, a mixture of seal's fur and possum in claret colour, and you can now buy this wonder wax again, eh? I don't put much on it because I'm going to... The older I'm getting with arthritis sets in. Lock it off. Use a ball spun. Mm. Keen spinners. You can velcro it up if you want to, but I still think that's easier than try to dub onto the thread itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty awkward, isn't it? <coughs> that's a great little, great little spinning tool. Yeah, that Madman America fella had those, and uh, I got a heap of them over for my classes. Okay, now. I go the opposite way because I want the thread to, I want my gold wire to stand up a little bit. So I go the opposite way to what I've wound it on. Okay. I don't like that flight. I do now. <laughs> we'll put our throat hackle down through it. I'm only using a very soft, you can use anything you like. There again, I do the, I do the throat hackle exactly the same as we done the last one. I find the hardest thing to get today is that those good, good uh, decent sort of like angle ply. Yeah, they're not, they're not easy, are they? No. Okay, you don't need a lot on it because you know you're going to double, double it down up. anyway. Okay. I so say you might prefer to do it the other way, going down, but I, I just do this method because I, I find it quick, easy. Brian. 
Okay. We use the same. You can usually get a couple of flies out of one feather. There's not much in them, is there, when you look at them? Okay, same again. I just straighten them a little bit to bring them back to the same, try and get them back to the same length, roughly. Did you say wood duck's the same? <clears throat> yeah, you can use wood duck in them. It's a bit softer, <laughs> yeah. but I do like the... I do like the uh, the bronze mallard. Okay, turn him over. Come in your your quarter, in a quarter again. You rolled it, and there it is. Mm. I've been trying to work out how to do something like that for a hell of a long time, and you just solved a couple of issues I've been having. Yeah. And and I say they will they will split, but you don't worry you about don't that. Don't worry about that. No. Nah. Don't worry about it in the least. Tell me what to, what what's it actually represent in the water? Who knows? Food. Uh it's like it's supposed to be, aren't they? Either like a, a merger pattern, a merger pattern, the, and all right. Like, but you're fishing it usually stripping them anyway, so that you're not fishing them like an emerger, are you? No. So who knows? Yeah. Okay. These are the three. English wets that I go to 80% of the time if I'm going to fish small, smaller flies. As I say, we're tying these in, in tens, but in twelves they're a fair bit smaller. Mm. 